on the 12th of September, the Premier League start for the 2020-2021 season. And a lot of you guys have been asking for a prediction video. It's the first time I'm doing it. It's quite bad, but we'll give it a go. For cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 20 Ultimate Team coins, check out u7buy.com and use code HABER to get yourself 5% off all of your orders. So, we're currently in Greece right now, which is why everything looks different. And I'm joined by my friend Reese, who I'm in Greece with... Shocking joke. Reese fit on Instagram. We'll put a, um, a screenshot of my Instagram. Drop me a follow. I'm currently Ryan's coach. He has lost, is it eight kilos, nine kilos? Nine I kilos. didn't agree to any of this. I don't know who's putting the screenshot yep. up. Here we go. We're going to be doing our Premier League predictions. Leave yours in the comments down below. If you agree, disagree, all that good stuff. I want to see the conversations in the comments down below. Don't be too harsh if you disagree heavily with what we have to say. But we're going to go 20 to first. I think the only... Really important clubs are like 20, 19, 18, and then, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You know, the, the European spots and the relegation spots, I think, are the really important ones. Everything else will be kind of jumbled in between, but we'll give it our best shot and hopefully get a few of these right. And what we should say as well, guys, it is currently the 29th of August. So if Messi signs for Man City, if Wilfred Zaha leaves, if any transfer happens, obviously we don't know about it. So don't judge us, okay? That is, that is actually a very valid point. Um, if if any transfers do happen in this time, I think only Messi to City will change my mind for anyone. I don't think of anyone else. Mm. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. We have at the 20th spot, the very bottom of the Premier League, the last spot of the relegation spot. Rock or, bottom. I don't know. It's a tough one for me. Uh, there's a few teams I want to put in there. Uh, for me, I think Fulham are going straight back down again. It might be a bit harsh, and I apologise Fulham fans, but... I think you were quite ropey in the uh, in the qualification to get into the Premier League in the playoffs. I think you got kind of lucky against Brentford, uh, and I don't think that you got what it takes to stay in the Premier League. I don't know about you, but I don't. Yep, completely agree. I think rock bottom, twenty four points maximum. Maybe. <laughs> no, I, re I reckon. Oh my word. I know. I reckon. I reckon thirty points. 20, 24 to thirty points. I can't see them doing too well. They they did shocking last time they were in, weren't they? They brought mm. in Sherla, I remember. In nineteenth place, we have. Aston Villa. Aston, no more Jack Grealish, Schiller. If they get rid of Jack Grealish, they are screwed in the Premier League. I think they're pretty screwed anyway. The team structure, the the attack especially, it's just not good enough, man. It's just simply not good enough. Uh, they've got a few decent players. I rate Mings. I rate Trezeguet, but they're not enough to Disagree carry Disagree with Mings. Do you Disagree not with Mings, no. I, I think like if he him. wasn't like tall, and he would not be rated. I think he's just big. He's quite fast, isn't he? Yeah. I think he's, I, I think he's horrendous. I don't, I, I don't mind him. I think, he's, I think he's all right. I don't, I don't think he's, uh, he's particularly terrible. But the rest of the team, like I said, like, if you look at a lot of games, for example, they had a game against Wolves towards the back end of the season that I remember watching and thinking, how are Villa even in the Premier League? They're, I'm sorry, Villa fans. I know you guys are a, a, a hard group of fans, but I just don't think that you guys are going to do it in the Premier League. I hope you go down and make a few key signings and come back up again, though. Mm -hmm. I would like to see them back in the Premier League because I do actually like Villa as a club. The 18th spot. Uh, upon reflection, I think that this, the actual where we're putting these teams, it could change. Yeah. We've gone for the three teams that we think are going down. It doesn't matter. It's the 18th, 19th, 20th because that doesn't matter in the Premier League. It's, you know, whoever's in those spots going down. But we've gone with Aston Villa's Brummy neighbours in West Bromwich. Yeah, they they looking at the squad, looking at the two minutes ago, looking at the squad. Shall, <laughs> yeah, shall we two say? minutes ago, looking we, at the squad. We we realised that potentially we might have f***ed up a bit, and we should have put these a little bit lower. Potentially, like I said, I feel like 18th to 20 probably could go anywhere. I think these are going to be going down though, as a guarantee. I what if West Brom come like 10th now? How mm. stupid would we look? Yeah. Do you know what? If West Brom come 10th right now, I want you to remember this video, and I want you to to make fun of me next year when we're uh, when we're reflecting on these predictions or just blame it on me or yeah just yeah, blame, just blame it, on it on me this just is probably my first Reece. appearance yeah. and last appearance on the channel just blame guys. it on so Reece, yeah. just That's blame it on Reese and say we'll never get this guy back on any videos in order to not make this video like 40 minutes long for the next sort of 17 from 17th to 10th we've kind of bunched them up in a, a small group as the bottom half of the table teams that aren't really getting relegated or we don't think will get relegated um, in no particular order, but kind of in a particular order. We've gone with 17th Newcastle, 16th Palace, 15th West Ham, 14th Brighton, 13th Leeds, 12th Burnley, 11th Sheffield United, and 10th Everton. Uh, for me, Everton, I, I think the squad doesn't have that 
that marquee kind of attacker. When they had Lukaku, they had someone they were feeding the ball to constantly. And I don't think they really have that anymore. You know, they don't have, in my opinion, much of an identity in attack. They kind of just rely on their midfield. You know, Gilfie Sigurdsson does a lot of, of, of work for Everton. They kind of just play press and hope they can convert goals. So I don't think they're getting anywhere higher than 10th. However, looks like they might make a couple of key signings. You know, James Rodriguez, mm. Alan, um, Ducore, yep. some big signings there. So it could push them up the league a little bit. So with Everton, I think mentality-wise, if they played like they do against Liverpool uh, in every single game, they'd probably do really well. They probably would finish top six. Uh, it seems to be the one game, especially at their place, where they seem to switch on and play ridiculously well. I also think Richarlison is a quality player, so I kind of disagree with what you said about them not having an identity going forward. But I do think it's dependent on signings. If they go out and sign a few big players, I do think Everton could probably finish slightly higher than 10th. But for now, we've put on 10th. We've put on 10th. Yeah, I kind of forgot about Richarlison, but you know what? I'm sticking to my guns. Uh, we've got Sheffield United at 11th. Uh, they've just lost Dean Henderson, who I think was massive, a massive, massive miss. reason they finished yeah. in uh, the top half of the table last year. I don't think that they'll do that this year. Ramsdale's not bad. Ramsdale's decent, but yeah. I just don't think that he is, uh, he is particularly incredible. Um, I also think with the rest of the team, like... Way too much Brexit. Mm. Look at their strikers. <laughs> just Brexit strikers. We've got, right. six, we've got strikers who are six foot two, mm-hmm. cross the ball, Ollie McBurney masterclasses. I can't see them finishing even close to where they finished last year. Um, yeah. and doing half as well I reckon I reckon 11th could also be generous but I think they're such a well-oiled team and as like a cohesive unit that they will do quite good for them that is that is talking I also remember that last year um, I don't think the Premier League was particularly competitive as we've seen in previous years so we saw the likes of Sheffield United doing incredibly we saw Leicester in the top four for a, a large period of time even with huge injuries I think that Last year, there just wasn't that competitive nature that we've had in previous years. And it hasn't lo- looked like the best league in the world as it has in previous years. Hopefully, this year, as we've seen from the transfer window, that more teams are taking this really seriously. We'll see more competitiveness with especially the mid-table teams. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where a lot of these teams finish. I've gone with Burnley 12. Burnley always kind of just, you know, they kind of just Brexit sit around team. there. You know, they kind of sit back, they drop back. They play pretty boring football and they kind of just sit around the mid-table area every year. Um, we've gone with Leeds as 13th, but that's, I think, dependent on how Bielsa wants to play that Leeds team. Yes. I was saying prior to this, if they try and play their open, expansive football, I could easily see like a Norwich 2.0. But I do think, like player for player, they probably do have better quality. So I think it really depends on their style. If they try and play open and try and play their, the football they were playing in the championship, I think they could get destroyed. I think the game against Liverpool on the opening day, I think on the 12th of September, I think that would be a good test to see how they do. Because that would be against the team that won the league. And, uh, and if they do well, and if, let's say, they don't get absolutely battered, then I feel like they could do quite well this season. Uh, but I think that'll be the first main test for them. And obviously, it's the first game of the season, so that'll be a decent watch. Brighton, 14th. Um, I think they were relying heavily on Lewis Dunk last year, but they've got Ben White back. And I don't think they're going to loan him out or sell him to Leeds anytime soon. Yeah. So that could be you know, a big uh, asset to them in defence. Uh, I think that they kind of got a bit unlucky last year in a few games. Um, they definitely they had their fair share of, uh, of luck. But I think that there was a few games where they took 1-0 defeats or, or had draws in games they should have won. That was pretty unfortunate. Um, you know, they had some good wins against Arsenal and, and teams like that as well. So I think 14th is pretty fair. I can't see them battling for relegation. Can't see them getting top of the table. You know, 14th pretty, yeah. pretty comfortably. Mm-hmm. Um, 15th, West Ham. Kind of generous. I don't know. They they definitely could be battling in the relegation zone. I think they were last year, weren't they? Yeah, I'm pretty Quite sure. Quite heavily. I'm pretty sure it came down yeah. to the last game of the season. So it, they haven't seemed to bolster their team much. No. Have they I got enough noticed? goals in their team to begin with? I think mm. Felipe Anderson got one goal last season. Haller, he got like, I don't think he even got more than, yeah, I don't think he got more than like six or seven. I'm not too sure if they've got enough goals in their team. Or maybe if they go out and sign someone big, potentially they could do better but I think with West Ham it's probably another season where they probably don't get relegated but they'll be scrapping around that relegation battle come maybe December January and then they'll probably win a few games towards the back end of the season and mm-hmm. do their usual survive don't spend any money don't back yeah. David Moyes and uh, and yeah they were linked to that um, the Ezzy guy Easy. 
they were linked to him, but Palace, he's gone to he's gone to Palace, and yeah. I know they they were heavily linked to him. So if they've missed out on him, it might be a testament to how the season is going to go for them. That's true. Seventeenth, um, Newcastle could easily be relegated again. Mike Ashley has to be the worst owner in football. Yeah. I, I think that I stand with a lot of Newcastle fans here when I share your frustration just from a football fan standpoint. Newcastle were a big team in the Premier League for Massive a long team, time. Yeah. To see the, the kind of downfall and where they are now, it's, it's shameful. Uh, the fact that the Premier League takeover, or sorry, the Premier League blocked the takeover for no particular reason, pretty shameful as well. So I do share that frustration for you New, uh, Newcastle fans. Uh, and I think that 17th, it, they could even be relegated. You know, if they don't bring in the, the, the signings they need, they definitely they, they could see relegation this year. And then for 16th, because we missed out 16th, keep up. We missed it out. Well, um, we got we got Crystal Palace. I think this is one of them where if Wilfred Zaha goes, oh, I feel like Crystal Palace. Well, that's why I missed them out down. because it's. Okay. I think that with Zaha, sixteenth, fifteenth, fourteenth, thirteenth, maybe. Without Zaha, I think relegation definitely. Yeah. I think that Zaha is is one is of the good? most important yeah. players. That in terms of importance to a singular team. I don't think there's many players in other teams that share that value and that role that Zaha has for as well Crystal as, Palace. As well as the overall fear factor. I'm not sure about mm -hmm. when you play early, when you watch them. So uh, Man United versus Palace. I, I'm, if I'm watching Liverpool against them, I'm scared of Zaha. When he gets the ball, he can just turn it on. And he's one of the only players, I think, in the league who has that X factor. And I don't know what you think, but in general, yeah. Zaha, quality player. And if they would... Like be massively, massively impacted if he left. Okay, we're into the top ten now. The the big boys, the the good teams in the Premier League. Good teams, I think all all teams in Premier League are pretty good. Um, for ninth, we've gone with Southampton. Danny Ings is is scores goals, fantastic. scores he's, goals. That's he's it. really coming to his own. Uh, at Liverpool, I was quite upset for him because he didn't seem to to find his form at Liverpool. He didn't get the playing time, but uh, no, at Southampton, he looks like he's been really decent and. They could definitely clinch top half of the season. Eighth and seventh, I for me personally, could could be either one. I've gone with eighth Leicester and seventh Wolves. I think it could easily be seventh Leicester, eighth Wolves. For me, Leicester towards back end of the season, I think you agree is they've just they weren't Christmas looking great. Onwards. They were they were looking, in my opinion, uh, a very weak team. Obviously, they went and had a lot of injuries, and that's fair enough. But their depth lacks massively. They've just got rid of. Uh, Chilwell who I think was quite important in the Leicester team yeah. and now with Ricardo Pereira being their only in my opinion good fullback in that team I think that uh, if Ricardo Pereira was to get injured or if he was to get suspended for example they would leak goals against whatever teams they have to go up against after that which obviously would cause them to, to lose games I think that Soyuncu is quite aggressive he's had what two or three suspensions this season as well yeah. he missed out on the last three games of the, of the league because of a suspension um, that could easily mess them up and if for some reason Vardy gets injured or James Madison gets injured I don't think they've got anything in attack Damari Gray is okay and I think that Iosi Perez is quite an explosive player but Harvey Barnes Harvey Barnes <laughs> yeah and Harvey Barnes as well <laughs> But th on their own, in my opinion, they're not good enough. They, they, they're simply uh, players that look good because a fantastic uh, cam or a great striker can convert chances for them or create them with great chances. And without those players, I think, personally, Leicester won't achieve anything higher than 8th or 7th. I could be wrong, and if you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. But, yeah, I don't think Leicester will get any higher than 7th. For Wolves, uh, obviously... We know Wolves have been great. Two seasons in a row, they came sixth. I didn't realise yeah. that they, their first season in the Premier League and then the season after, they came sixth twice. That's mm. that's impressive. To come up and me. finish sixth. That's, that's like, very that's impressive. Good. Got to yeah. the quarters of the UEL, I think, the Europa yeah. League. Um, unfortunately, lost against Sevilla. I can't really say much. United lost against Sevilla as well. Um, but, no, I think Wolves will definitely secure a top 10 spot, whether that be seventh, that could be sixth, that could be eighth. I think that they'll they'll tear around there. They've got a really good uh, system. They've obviously got Jimenez. They've got Jota. They've got Adama. They've just sold Matt Doherty to Spurs now, so they'll probably bring in maybe a right back slash right wing back, or they'll play Adama as that that further back role and, and bring in a new winger. Um, mm. They have that other Portuguese guy. I forget his name. Um, um, the young guy, yeah. Paulo something maybe. Mm. They've been linked to Maitland Niles for that wing back role as well. So that'd be a decent signing yeah. for him. 
Mm. And they've got a few. Qu- they've got a few quality players. That back three that they play uh, really good. You have got Connor Cody who's the captain. Yep. Yeah, I can see Wolves doing well. I reckon. Definitely. I reckon seventh will be will be a good guess for Wolves. Jose Mourinho, mm. sick Spurs. That's what we've gone for. I am a little bit skeptical on this one. I know firsthand what Jose can do to a team, right? I've seen him at United. We've seen a little bit of Chelsea as well. We've seen at other teams. He thinks that he is bigger than the team itself, and I think that could be Spurs' downfall. They've got players like Harry Kane, Hyung Min Son, Hugo Lloris, to name a few. They've got some really big personalities, and I think that with clashes, they could have a really poor season. Mm. I don't think they come any lower than sixth, though. For me, I think they will get Europe. You know, Mourinho always seems to bring something out. He always seems to manage to achieve at least Europe, European football. So I think that we'll see uh, Spurs getting sixth. Could be, could be a seventh place or it could be an FA Cup uh, win to secure European football as well. But I think they'll definitely get some form of European football. Um, have they made many signings? They've signed they've, Doherty yeah. and uh, Hoiberg as well. Mm, yeah, so, so that's two midfielders. I'm guessing Endombele's going because he didn't play at all and so they've gone out and signed mm, Hoiberg to that. I heard that apparently Endombele had private training sessions with Mourinho though. So yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe he likes him, maybe he thinks of him as part he of the system. hardly played him last year. That's yeah. like a £60 million pound player. So, yeah, I think, I think Spurs is a tricky one. It, I feel like if you were going to bet on Spurs getting, let's say, finishing 13th or something and Mourinho <laughs> getting sacked by Christmas, you would probably think that there's a chance. Wouldn't surprise yeah, me. Wouldn't surprise wouldn't me. at all. But at the same time, I do think sixth. I think sixth would probably be quite a good little estimate for Spurs. Yeah. Uh, fifth place, now going for the uh, other team in North London. We're going for Arsenal. Is it North London? It is North London. Yeah, North London. North London. Arsenal. London. London. Uh, we're going for the, the red yeah, team the, the, in London. Yeah, the red team in um, London. We're going for Arsenal. Uh, they've made some pretty decent signings. Saliba. They've brought in uh, Saliba. Saliba. I think they've, they've that Gabriel? confirmed Gabriel Magales as well. They haven't confirmed that. Uh, is it not confirmed? No, but um, Fabrizio tweeted, here we go. So that's pretty much a confirmation. They had a point. midfielder as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, but they seem to bolster their defence, which is their, their biggest downfall. So I can see... Uh, Arsenal getting that fifth spot. I don't think top four though. I just, I think Arsenal are their own worst enemies and I don't think they get top four. Okie dokie, on to the top four now. Um, for Dislikes me. Dislikes incoming. <laughs> Dislikes incoming. So let's have a look. With it. Yeah, let's have a look what we've put. This, for me, I think there's th- fourth and third are controversial, in my opinion. 100%. I think second and first for other people are controversial. For me personally, I think that it's pretty solidified. So. We'll go fourth to first. For me, fourth place. We should I think preference. Be... We should preference. They, this could easily, and I mean easily, they could finish higher. They could probably finish lower if they don't gel. Uh, I think with how many signings they've made, it's a bit worrying. Do you want to tell so, the team first? Yeah, Chelsea. So Chelsea. It's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. Chelsea. Just we've so. gone for four. Um, Chelsea. Yeah, fourth we've gone Chelsea. fourth place. Chelsea. Now they like like you said, they could easily be. They could be a sec. They could win the league for yeah. all we know. If they all clicked. If they all clicked. Making six or seven signings, especially this close to the start of the league, in my opinion, will make a very difficult job for Frank Lampard to get these players playing with chemistry, playing well together, uh, understanding how each other play. And I think that could that could be detrimental to Chelsea's season if they don't get those players to work together. I think that uh, they've signed Havertz, Werner, who I think already will probably click quite well because they probably know a lot about each other and how they play. They've probably played in the youth system in Germany. They've probably played uh, against each other a lot as well in, in the German leagues and whatnot. So I'd imagine they will probably gel on quite well. But you've got Ziyech, who's a pretty much an outsider coming from, from the, the Dutch league. Um, you know, he probably, I don't know if he would know any of the players that he's, that he's coming to play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got two brand new centre-backs. You've got a brand new left-back. It could all go a little bit pants, I think. And if it does, fourth place, I don't think they'll get lower than fourth, but I think that will be a rough uh, start. Now, third place, we've gone for United. Now, I think easily United could be fourth. Yeah. I think Chelsea could be third. Yeah. I think it could be, I think United could, could honestly come fifth or sixth uh, if, if the league goes that way. We haven't made any signings at all yet. And you're not linked to anyone, bar we're, Sancho. We're, we're, apparently, we're slightly linked to Van der Beek. Now, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, with Sancho, I think it will bolster our attack massively and give us a really good uh, depth and flexibility. in our squad. And Everyone, flexibility, yeah, for sure. Everyone players for each position. It'd be a really good signing. But it's, I think without that, uh, I don't know. We, we need more, though. We need yeah. we need a new defender, in my opinion, and a new centre-back. We need a, a new left-back. For me, dream signing for me is David Alaba. Honestly, I think he'd be fantastic because he offers that left-centre-back role 
fast, uh, would be able to assist Maguire in, in, in pace, essentially, the, the, the able core to run, able, able to of, the, the, the core part of Maguire's game that he's really lacking is pace. And I think having uh, the ability to aid him and assist him in that regard would be, would be huge for United. He's also got the ability to play out on the left if we need to, if we play a five back or if, if you know, Luke Shaw gets injured and Brandon Williams hits his head on something again, uh, mm. then maybe. Uh, so that would be a dream signing for me, but whether that happens or not, I don't know. Um, I think we need more signings to guarantee a top four spot. I've put us third based on if our starting 11 starts playing as well as he did post lockdown, but. And we'll if he gets 20 penalties a season. And if we get 20 penalties yeah. a season, yeah. Well, stop fouling us if you don't want to get penalties. How about that? Oh. Um, second place, I've gone with uh, Liverpool. We should, no, we, should, we should have a drum roll for this. There should be a nah, drum roll. No one cares about a drum roll. We've gone City second place. Now, that could change if they sign Messi. Um, that also could change, in my opinion, there we go. heavily yeah. on what happens in the Liverpool squad. Yes. If, if you get a big injury up top, this has been mentioned for years. Big injury defence. Yeah, we haven't had... That's we've true. Been, we've been no, lucky. it's true. We've been lucky. It is true. So I, I feel like it's yeah. one of those things, you have to say it though. If you do get a big injury, say if Van Dijk, I don't know, loses his leg in, a, in an accident somehow, mm. or if Salah gets snapped, he's out for four to six months. I think that you could see a very, very difficult uh, run of Premier League games. But like you say, it hasn't happened in two years of people suggesting that could happen. It probably won't happen this year. You're probably going to bring in Thiago as well to strengthen that midfield, which would be a great signing. And City probably won't sign Messi. So I think for me, top spot Liverpool, second spot Man City. Uh, I think that is probably my Premier League prediction. I also do think it will be closer. I don't think it will be like the oh yeah, it'll serious be, it'll be gap a lot of points. Closer. It'll be a yeah. lot closer. I think City bringing in that Ferran Torres or mm. whatever, um, and they've brought in a few decent players, okay. uh, and a lot of backup. Yeah, I feel like. The Liverpool still probably will win the league, in my opinion and Ryan's opinion. But I think with what City have brought in, it'll be a far closer uh, title race, that's for sure. Definitely. And and who knows? We do have. What, when does it, I think the transfer window doesn't shut until the end of September this year because it's, of yeah, it's of first week what happened. Uh, yeah, October. Yeah, first week. Yeah, October. first week October uh, transfer window shuts. So who knows between now and then what could happen? We could see. Uh, the likes of, uh, I don't know, Man United waiting to see our first couple of games of the season before yeah. going out and spending a lot of money on players that we need. We could be waiting to see uh, Man City. They could be eyeing up a bid for Messi. You never know. There's so many conspiracy theories around that. What you know, what could happen, what won't happen, I don't know. Um, so that could all be subject to change. Like I said, we'll revisit this in a year to see how oh, right slash wrong invite? we were. Am I going to get the second invite? Oh, Guys, no. like oh, the video no. and comment oh, more no. videos with Reese. That's what we need. That's oh, what no. we need. We'll have to see. Yeah. But like I said, we'll revisit it next year yes. uh, and we'll see how right or wrong we are. Let me know yours in the comments down below as well. I want to see your predictions. I want to hear what you have to say about all the teams and whatnot. And if we're right or wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Yes, sir. I will see you later.